That's a really nice jacuzzi. Nexigo 4K short throw laser projector paired with the Vivid Storm projector screen designed specifically for this kind of application. My window blinds are fully open and this is a pretty bright room. Even if I have my light on, I can still see my uh, projector screen perfectly fine. It has an excellent viewing angle and resolution. And this projector has uh, two HDMI inputs, supports HDMI ARC, Wi-Fi 2.4 and 5 gigahertz frequency bands and it has Android built in. I have my Apple TV and Xbox connected. This video is recorded using a Sony A7S Mark III camera in 4K 60fps and it's very close to a true representation of what I'm seeing with my naked eye. Assuming you're watching this content in a high quality monitor, you will find more video samples later in this video. I will also do some latency tests with my Xbox controller. There is no idle power draw when it's powered off. It can also be used as a massive computer screen and the text is pretty sharp, look. The whole projector screen is 100 inches and this laser projector can support up to 150 inches. My MacBook Pro 16 inch is connected to the projector via HDMI cable and I'm going to play a few 4K video samples. Its viewing angle is just as good as any IPS monitors thanks to the Vivid Storm background rejection screen. A large group of people can enjoy the movie at the same time. It also gets pretty loud with the subwoofer built in. There is really no need for a soundbar. It works pretty well with a blank drywall, ideally white, and it will be able to project a 150 inches screen. However, it will still benefit from a dedicated projection screen like this one from Vivid Storm that features a specially designed fabric that may be able to reject ambient lighting to provide the maximum contrast and uh, brightness setting. It has a remote control, so it can be retracted or even uh, mounted on the ceiling with special hardware and have a top-down setup like this, so it's not gonna take a floor space. By the way, since I'm using a very wide-angle lens for this shot, it appears to be curved on the top, but it is actually perfectly straight. The image quality coming out from this 4K projector is just phenomenal. It is hands down the best projector I've ever used. It looks so sharp and crisp viewing 4K contents. It's rated at 2500 lumens and is virtually indistinguishable from an actual 100 inch TV. My projection screen is limited at 100 inches. I can imagine if it goes up to 150 inch it's gonna be cinematic, and the lumens per inch will probably reduce. The colors are saturated and vivid. If you're looking for the best image quality, I think this is it. Here's another 4K video sample on YouTube. You can see the texts are super sharp and the colors are balanced and realistic. It maintained its sharpness all the way to its four corners. And here is another example. And the upper left corner. I am very pleased with its image quality and its color performance. It's Chromecast compatible. So I can quickly pick a video on my uh, iPhone and send it to the projector. In this case, the progress bar is controlled on my iPhone. 
as it supports Chromecast, the video data transfer is actually done via Wi-Fi. The projector connects to the YouTube service directly without going through my phone as a relay. See how the light source affects the um, picture quality. It is also possible to cast my iPhone screen directly onto the projector. It's quite responsive. I have two HDMI devices connected. It goes very loud. Now it's only a quarter of the full value volume. It works very well for some light gaming on the Xbox and the audio quality is excellent thanks to its built-in subwoofer. I'm going to place my microphone here so you can kind of hear the audio effects from the um, Minecraft game. This is running at 4K on the Xbox. If you're not playing FPS games competitively, I think this is a fantastic gaming projector. Here are some latency tests. It's actually pretty playable as a gaming projector. There is not a lot of noticeable lags. Check this out. Also keep in mind, the Xbox controller is connected to the console using Bluetooth. So there is Pretty some cool. latency there. In order to reduce the latency, I'm better off using wired mouse and keyboard to play this game. Now let me show you how to set it up in a few minutes. Let's power it on for the first time. Okay, press these two buttons at the same time to pair the remote. Remote found. Oh, that's pretty loud. Okay, next. English. Searching for Wi-Fi network. Connect to my network. Password. It has an Android operating system built in, so I actually plugged in a USB dongle so I can use my keyboard and mouse to enter the passwords. Okay, internet connected. For this step, I'm gonna pick the projector screen. All right, looks like we are all set. Complete. It has Amazon Alexa enabled. Okay, that's its main screen. I can navigate using this easy to use remote. It sort of feels like um, Apple TV or Fire Stick. It's quite snappy. In a sense, I feel like it is more responsive. That's the settings page, network, Bluetooth, display. Brightness mode is standard. Brightest, let's go with the brightest. The power consumption currently it is 247 watts. If I revert back to standard, the power consumption is 199 watts. So about 50 watts of power difference. Very responsive. I really like how snappy this built-in operating system works. We have YouTube, Prime Video. All right, let's try YouTube. Super fast, and this thing is compatible with 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi system. Okay, looks like I stepped into that boundary again. I have to press uh, any key to reactivate. 
there's an option to disable motion detection. Okay, cool. I feel like the sound quality is excellent. Okay, one press of the home button returns to the main screen. If I come back to the YouTube, it actually picks up where I left off. So that is a nice feature to have. Yeah, all the familiar navigation system. This quality is 1080p. Well, I have to pick another one, which is 4K. And by the way, this video is also shot in 4K. When watching YouTube videos, uh, just make sure the quality is really set at 4K HDR. I connected both Xbox and Apple TV to the back of the projector using its HDMI 1 and 2 ports. Now go to the input source under settings. HDMI is connected to my Apple TV. And now I can uh, enjoy the 4K resolution from the uh, Apple TV directly. Just want to go back to the uh, home page of the Apple TV. Now let's go back to HDMI 2. When I press the back button, ask me to confirm if I want to exit the current input source. Press yes. Let's go to HDMI 2, which is the Axe box. It uh, looks, looks like the main page runs at 1080p 60 hertz. Now it's just switched to 4K 60 hertz automatically on the P Xbox Series Series One. Yeah, I think I have Series One. The menu option is available from the left side. Uh, triggered by the button on the remote where I can change the image parameters, brightness, audio mode, Dolby Audio, and M M E M C. I'm not sure what this is. Oh, looks like it's uh, probably the responsiveness. The high, come back, 3D settings. HDMI 2.0 on or off. HDMI CEC. Keystone correction. Projection mode. This is probably one of the best UI I've used in terms of uh, projectors. I really like um, this Android UI. There are three options when the power off button is pressed. To power off, sleep timer, and screen off. I'm gonna pick the screen off. The machine is still running, but I can quickly wake it up by pressing the home button or the power on off. A 4K short throw laser projector from Nexigo. It can project up to 150 inches of a massive screen. Let's take a look, HDR10, Dolby Audio, it also has a subwoofer built in, stereo, HDMI arc. We got some user manuals. It's a pretty big box. <laughs> I need a, a larger workbench, you know. Main unit. Power cord. The remote. It has Android built in. Okay. Uh, two AAA batteries included. I think that's everything in the box. Yes, there's nothing else. Okay, let's take a look at its design and its ports in the back. There's a power on off switch. Looks like the speaker is integrated and not user removable. This is the stereo speaker. USB port. 
the height adjustment for the leg. There's another uh, same one on the other side. Looks like we have three quarter inch mounting um, holes, screw holes for ceiling mounting. It can be mounted upside down. The AC power input, another USB input, two HDMI inputs. These are um, for like Apple TVs or Google Chromecast Fire TV sticks. The HDMI 2 is an ARC, which means uh, stands for the audio return channel. So uh, a sound bar can be connected separately to get audio out from this HDMI port. The audio out 3.5 and AV in is also a 3.5 jack. It has the um, Ethernet connection, the LAN port. Okay, the same adjustment on the, on the left side. It's worth mentioning it has these two eye protection sensors. So if I were to tilt my head and look into the directly into the laser beams, that's not possible. It's going to get cut off. Okay. So let's connect it to the power. Set it up. This is my uh, power meter. I'm going to rotate it and let it face the other way so I will not get the laser beam directly shining into my eyes. According to the quick start guide and when using it for the first time, I gotta press and hold these two buttons to uh, pair it with the main unit. These two buttons is done um, using Bluetooth. And the power consumption is 200 watts. It's over 200 watts power consumption. Obviously, I do not have anything uh, in front of me, so I'm going to move it to a different location later, but that's uh, how you pair the remote. It's quite sensitive. The um, beam will get cut off when there's something in the way.